so much. Um, it's a joy to be here this afternoon. I just want to make some opening remarks before I go into God's Word. I thank God for some of my friends here. I thank God for um, James Koshi, Pastor James Koshi, the previous time when I was in the UK. It was this church that organized the meetings for me, and I'm really, really thankful. And I thank God for Bobby. Recently we were there in India as well, together. But let me just make a statement here. It's so important before we go into God's Word. I saw the announcement for the um, Malayali Pentecost Association. I just want to make a couple of statements regarding the, the guests that you're going to have. You know, I've had the privilege of ministering along with many, many powerful singers and worship leaders. But I just want to make mention of one man who has truly blessed my life in the last few couple of times that he has helped me in the worship ministry. You know, last two weeks back I was in Dubai. I remember I had a long day on that particular day. It was a lot of sessions, a lot of meetings. I had some board meetings, very important decisions to make. And I remember walking into a place feeling absolutely tired, absolutely wiped out. And I sat there, I was supposed to preach another five to ten minutes and Chiku was leading that worship that evening. And believe me, you know, I can say it with great confidence. As a young man was ministering, I felt an infusion of power. Such an anointing. You know, I thought I wouldn't be even be able to preach. But after he led, you know, and sang for a few minutes, believe me, I could preach for another 10 days non-stop. That was the amount of, of strength that I received. So I'm glad that young man is coming to, to UK. Make use of it. Let God use him mightily. He's got an extraordinary testimony. Extraordinary testimony. A man, I've not just seen him as a worship leader, but I also see him as a man who's got a very powerful, a deeper walk with Jesus. I also want to say Jacob Matthew, recently we were in a conference, you know, we were uh, speakers of the same conference, and I, you know, I was told by a lot of people, you know, I was not able to attend his session, I was in another session, but I was told he gave one of the most powerful teaching on family life, one of the best teaching on family living. So please do attend this Meetings, these are some great men of God that you are having in the city. God richly used this powerful men of God. Once again, can you put your hands together for Brother Donnie here? <laughs> Such a joy. You know, I know we are, I, I'm tired. I, I have to be honest, you know, I travel yesterday night, I couldn't sleep much. But I, I still, with all this tiredness, there's a sense inside of me. That God is about to do something. Now that is unmistakable. That's powerful. I can sense it deep into my bones. Now, let me just say this. Many times we don't realize what happens in such a city. We don't even know how God ministers to people. You know, we can't articulate what happens in such meetings where the Spirit of God moves. For example, a few minutes back, the man who was, who, the young brother who <coughs> sang the first song, Rana Prabha. He, he, I was out there, he came and spoke to me and said, it's about 20 years back, 20 years back, he attended one of a meeting that I was ministering along with a friend of mine, and that was the meeting in which he received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. He wanted to make sure it was me, because I've changed. But I said, you know, he mentioned, me the, uh, you know, mentioned to me the place, yes, of course, that was the place, in Walajabatam, near Tiruvala, that I used to minister a lot. Uh, and so, we never knew, I never knew that a man had received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's after 20 years in UK, I get to hear that testimony. Think about it. So who knows, some of the things that's going to happen today, I will hear a testimony in Russia. Come on. I said I will hear some testimonies in China, because this meeting is a meeting where ministers are going to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, can you put your hands together, give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. Let's get that. I don't like to get into a lot of testimonies, but this is something very, very powerful. Last two weeks back, you know, after preaching in one of our churches in Dubai, 
I came out of a session in a church in Dubai. For those of you who have got some idea of how churches are run there, when one church comes in, the other church goes out. There's a lot of flowing in and out of churches. So we've got a very limited time. And I walked out, this young man or a, a middle-aged man comes and meets with me, shook hand with me and said, Pastor, for 13 years, I have been waiting to see you. 13 years. He said, I've told this testimony that includes you. You have been an important part of my testimony and I've said this in many nations across the globe. But I've not got a chance to say this to you directly. So you have to give me a few minutes. He introduced himself. I was with my young adult pastor from Canada. We were together. He, 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 he looked at me, shook hand and said, Pastor, this is my testimony. My name is Anand Raj. He said, many years back, a staunch Hindu, he was the leader of a political party and I saw he has got this tattoo of that party on his body. And then he said he was also the leader of the RSS unit, the phonetic Hindu movement. And he was so anti-Christian, he was so in a, such an in a, in a, in a, antagonistic towards Christian meetings. You know, he said he is to do this, take a snake into the meeting place and release the snake. How many of you have heard that these things happening in Kerala? And this is the culprit. He said, I will take huge snakes and release them into the, among the people. And then the meeting will get you know, disrupted, there will be scattering of people, and the meeting goes haywire, completely you know, goes falls, falls apart. And that's what he did in every meeting. He said, one of the prime candidates that he was targeting was Asha Yubhada. She hated him. Amen. Either you love him or you hate him. <laughs> Amen. And he said, in one from 13 years back, he came to do this in one of my meetings conducted by Karispa. 13 years back. He said, Pastor, I came with the intention of disrupting the meeting. But that day, as you were praying, the power of God fell upon me. I fell down. I couldn't even move. You know, I was hit with the power of God. It's like lightning coming upon me. I fell down. I couldn't even move for so many minutes. But when I was down on the ground, I fell down as a man who hated Christians. But when I woke up, I woke up accepting Jesus as my Savior. How many of you really believe this power in the name of Jesus? Come on. You didn't hear me. I, I want to repeat that, that. How many of you believe that's power in the name of Jesus? If you believe that, shout a mighty amen to the, into the name of Jesus. Amen. Now listen to this. He said, you know, he's been saying this testimony. By the way, he's now a pastor. He's visiting Middle East with this testimony. So who knows what will happen in such a setting? All it takes is one move of God. Your life will never be the same again. So most of the people that know me and are familiar with my preaching, they call me Get Ready Faster. In recently I was in the States, they didn't even announce my name. They said, here comes Get Ready, Get Ready, Get Ready. Now I'm here to say Get Ready, Get Ready, Get Ready. For God is about to do something that can change your life forever. Come on, somebody shout a hallelujah. We are just about to experience the move of God. Now in the morning I started off with a theme and I knew I couldn't continue for the lack of time. I just gave you some introduction and now let me go ahead. It's so important. And now as a short recap for those of you not here this morning, I just want to say this. You know, if you want to grow, if you want to have a shift in your life, this is not for everybody. Now this is for people who are absolutely discontented absolutely feeling that they are in a place for too long they need to move out of it this is for people who feel that there's a greater call upon your life there's a higher call that God has given you for some reason you're able to attain to that call and today I want you, you to understand you're tired but I want you to harness your attention together put it together 
bring everything that you have together for God is about to do something spectacular in this place today evening. Can I get an agreement in the house of the Lord? And this is going to be very powerful. Now this is so important. We need to hear from God. I, I, was, I was reading the story of many men of God that have influenced or had a very powerful ministry across the globe. Many men of God. But most of them, I should say almost all of them, they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They heard a voice of God. They saw a vision from God. And that changed their life. I'm not, ask, I'm not talking about you going to a prophet and care or not. This is a very popular idea of going to a prophet. I'm never against it. But that's not what I'm emphasizing this afternoon. I'm not talking to going to a prophet and getting a prophetic word over your life. I'm talking about God speaking to you directly. Amen. You didn't hear me. How many of you really believe the Holy Spirit is your comforter? Hallelujah. How many of you know He's not given to you in a collective sense? He's given to you individually as your friend, as your guide. And so how many of you want to say, God, I will not take another step until you speak to me. For you are a speaking God. And this evening, I believe some of you are going to crave for God to speak to you. And God will not disappoint you. You're going to hear a voice from God. That's going to change your life forever. Come on, hallelujah. Now let me go back to the story of Cornelius. I don't want to read the scriptures because it's very, very familiar. Now listen to this. I spoke about prejudice, but let me go ahead. How many of you know the Bible says Simon? Now listen to me. Simon was in his house. He was visiting the site of the tanner, and the Bible says they took time to prepare food. And so he was hungry. Now look at the setting. It took some time for them to cook the food. And so he was hungry. Now that's interesting. Because you know, people don't like to keep the preacher waiting when it comes to food. But in this case, God orchestrated in such a way that the food got delayed. Sometimes even delay is a setting from God. Oh, you didn't hear me. If you believe your life is controlled by the Holy Spirit, you can't take anything for granted. Even the seat that you're seated is chosen by God. The person sitting beside you is planned by God. Can I get an agreement in the house of the Lord? Every step of your life is ordained by the Holy Ghost. That's what I call apostolic. We are led by the Holy Spirit. Now, the foot got delayed and in the, in the meantime, Peter, being hungry, he gets a, an afternoon nap. He goes for an afternoon nap. Now that's the setting. And in that story, look at the way God orchestrates everything. In that story, he showed a tray as a vision where all the animals of the, of the earth is now laid on this tray and God asked him to cut and eat or slay them and eat them because he was so hungry. Now why would God give him a, 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 a vision of food? Because he was hungry. Now why was he hungry? Because the food got delayed. Think about it. Even that entire process is planned by God. Oh, oh you didn't hear me. You know, I asked the Lord, God, why would you give a man who's hungry a dream about food? Because the Lord told, and the Lord told me, because vision needs to be imprinted inside of you. And some vision will only become uh, 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 significant if that vision had a situation, a context. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. So God put him in a situation so he can get a vision which he will never forget. If God had shown him any other vision, he would have forgotten it. But because he was hungry, that vision will stay with him for some time. And let me tell you, some of the situation that you're going through, God has arranged it to give you a vision. Come on. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. God. Some of you are blaming the devil for some of the situations that you're going through. But God says, don't you dare blame the devil because God situation to come to give you a revelation. Somebody said God removed people from Jacob and put him in isolation so God can give him a revelation. And this evening, every situation in your life is a setup from God to give you heavenly vision. If you believe that, lift up your voice and shout amen. How many of you want to declare today I'm going to come out of my situation with a vision from God. Come on. If you really believe what I'm trying to say, can you
listen carefully. God, that's what I call visual impression. Everybody say a visual impression. Say it again, visual impression. But you cannot run a ministry. You cannot even run your life based on somebody else's experience. You need to get a vision imprinted in your spirit from God. I have had three people in our church recently who received very powerful, I think those were watershed moment for our church when they received some very significant, relevant visions from God. The first person received a vision uh, about our church in the form of a building. Now why did God give him a vision of a building? Because he is a builder. He is a, he's a, he's a civil engineer. So he builds building. So when God spoke to him, gave him a vision of a building. Now we have another brother in our church who don't, don't know anything about building, but he was given a vision on numbers. A lot of numbers were shown to, to him in a dream. Why did God give him a vision in numbers? Because he is a treasurer. Come on. And we have another man recently who had a very powerful dream, and he was shown it in the dream that there was a surgery happening to his heart. Now, why did God show him a dream about surgery? Because he is a heart surgeon. Hallelujah. Now, God will use your background Hallelujah. to give you a vision. Hallelujah. So, that vision becomes relevant. Hallelujah. If God were to show me a vision of surgery, I wouldn't get a clue. I wouldn't have any idea of what it means. So, God has to show him. And anytime God shows me a vision, he will show me about traveling. Because I do that very often. And he also shows me dreams about me preaching. Because that's the only thing that I've done in my entire life. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. So God is going to use your situation and give you a vision. Oh, come on. How many of you want to give that a vision from God? Can I get agreement in the house of the Lord? Now, this is very, very poignant. This is very powerful. We need to receive some truth out of this. Now, listen carefully. Now, you, everybody should get a visual impression from God. I remember, you know, my, my co-pastor, we have I've got four pastors. My administrative assistant who helps me with administration is Pastor Herb Reina. Now, he's a white man, he's 83 years old. Now, he doesn't look 83, he doesn't act 83, he's very, very active. 83 years old man. He's my assistant. Now, he, he told me a story so beautiful. He said to me, Pastor, you know, this man is, was a Bible College president. He was also the World Vision Director and is an excellent administrator for my church. Excellent administrator. And he said to me, Pastor, when I was in my 10th grade, now listen, that's 15 years. Some of you are in that age, 15 years old. He was contemplating about his future, what to do with, his, with the rest of his life. He wanted to go into business, but one day God called him for a ministry. And then to substantiate that call, God gave him a vision. In that vision, he saw hundreds of thousands of people sitting on a bank of a river. On the bank of a river on sand. That's what he saw. He said he couldn't make any, he couldn't make any sense out of that vision because people sitting on the bank of a river doesn't make sense in a Canadian context because we will be frozen. <laughs> doesn't make any sense but he saw that vision and now that's when he was 15 years old now I want to challenge some of our young people get something from God because when you get something from God that becomes an anchor anytime you go through a tough time the vision will come back to you he said for many many years he's now 83 years old he said he had no clue as to what that means but in 1960s he was invited as one of the speakers for the Maraman Convention in Canada. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He was one of the speakers along with David, I'm sorry, uh, John, oh, what's his name? Sandy John. He was one of the speakers with him. He said when he stood on that platform and seeing people seated on the bank of a river, the vision came back to him. The vision that... I sense an anointing right now on my body. Hallelujah. Said, before you leave this place, God is going to anoint you with a vision. Are you ready? Somebody lift up your voice and shout an amen in the house of the Lord. You will be. Come on, Rick, come on, shout an amen. I'm a shout an amen. You are not going to be a shout an amen. You are receiving a vision about your future. Oh, hallelujah. 
just in your mind. It has to become imprinted in your spirit. It has to become so real that it becomes your life. Amen. You know, there's no difference between your life and the vision. The vision itself becomes your life. Amen. I remember I, I was I was never I thought I was never called to be a pastor. Some of you are not debating it, but let me tell you my story. I was, by God's grace, an excellent evangelist. I used to get 20, 25,000 people even in India for big crusades, huge crusades in the Nehru stadiums and, and major stadiums, an excellent evangelist. And I never wanted to be a pastor, believe me. Now I know why God has got a pastoral crown in heaven. <coughs> You need to love your pastor. Amen. I never wanted to be in all my friends in Bangalore. I grew up in the Bangalore church. My friend Johnson, my friend Nevi, all of them became pastors. But I used to sometimes, you know, become a little sarcastic. I used to say, you know what? That's your lot. You go and be pastor, I can travel. You know what? When you're an evangelist, you can preach five sermons for two years. Come on. Because you know, you go to a place and then you might visit that place after two years. You can preach the same sermon repeatedly in other places. But after becoming a pastor, you know what? Some days I preach about 150 to 200 sermons every year in our church. And believe me, our church, not many of them have got a lot of giftings from God, but they have got one gift invariably. They have got the gift of memory. <laughs> Recently I was preaching something and a man comes 77 years old. He doesn't even remember names of people. He came and told me, Pastor, you preached that first five minutes ten years back. <laughs> Come on, hallelujah. So I have to sit. So I never wanted to be a pastor. Believe me, if my life depended on it, I wanted to escape this pastoral call. And then comes all the prophets. And they will lay hand on me and with no uncertain terms they will tell me, you know what, God is going to change your calling. From an evangelist, I'm going to make you a pastor. Amen. I say, God, you can send me to Africa, but not a pastor. It's hard work because you're always there. People look at you. They look, you know, somebody tell me how I even, you know, the way I comb my hair. <laughs> It's so, so hard. Let me say this. So after the prophet, you know what? How many of you know when God is about to do something, the frequency of prophetic words will, in will increase. Amen. I call it the, the prophetic chatter will become louder. If you are hearing a prophetic word again and again, that means the time is come. Amen. I was in the Bangalore church, I was traveling a lot, and that particular season I was there. And how many of you know Pastor D. Morgan, the pastor of the biggest church in India? India. They are building a church for over, over 50,000. It has got 36,000 people in this church. He's also the Assembly of God Superintendent of India. So he was preaching on that day, and believe me, he's not a preacher like me. He stands very quietly, dignified behind the podium, and sometimes I really want to. Amen. He, he stands there and he'll give you a teaching. And that day the teaching was how to run your family. And believe me, there were not many hallelujahs <laughs> or amens or preach brother preach <laughs> in our church. There was a dearth of all kinds of expression because he was teaching husbands to love their wives. <laughs> and then in the afternoon session, Pastor Emmy Wardis, our pastor said, He's going to preach in Tamil. Would somebody translate it from Tamil to Malayalam? And I lifted up my hand and I don't even know what Tamil means. <laughs> I know some Tamil, but not the biblical Tamil. I said, I'm a translate. And I kept the fleas before God. Now this is something. Our God hears our prayers. I kept the fleas before God and said, God, this is one of the biggest, greatest pastors in India. Now if you want me to be a pastor, I'm not going to go to him, and he doesn't even know me for man. I'm not going to go to him, but he has to come to me and lay hand on me and pray for me and tell me that you have been anointed as a pastor. In my heart, I said, that will never happen. <laughs> for once, for all, I'll escape this pastoral calling. <coughs> you know what? The message go 
goes on and is talking about family life halfway through believe me this is exactly how it happened he looked down on me that means he is taller than me he looked down at me and said in the thumbi are apra therige sir i who is his brother amen and then he said in the thumbi ki vendi prarthikan devu ennodu padavu and god be my witness i fell down on the ground now, some of you have got problem with it that's your problem but i fell down <laughs> i fell down on the ground and i'm lying down there and this is what happened a vision a visual imprint and i will never forget that vision as long as i live i want to say you can fragment me into tiny pieces into oblivion but even the last piece will speak with confidence Hallelujah. of the vision that God showed me. And today I'm going to speak over the people the anointing of assurance. Come on somebody and say I receive it in the name of Jesus. An anointing of assurance. As I'm lying down on the ground, I see this huge world map in appearing before me. This huge. It is not a globe, it was a map. And then I saw the nations of the world but I couldn't see penetratingly into the nations because it's cloud clouded by a dark cloud and all of a sudden a wind comes from somewhere and moves this this compelling darkness over the nations or and, and then I can see the nations now appearing countries and I heard a voice the doors of nations are now open to you amen one mission one mission let me tell you people of god that's very month we start our first church in africa and today we have over 300 churches in africa alone come on hallelujah what am i trying to say god is going to give you somebody said in a vision from god i need to hear the voice of the lord if that's your hunger can you make us as can speak to us i'm not preaching for everybody i'm preaching for people that know that this is going to be the the crux of the matter this is going to be the of your life if you believe that can you make yourself known and shout a hallelujah in the house and I was lying down there you know I heard footsteps running so fast to, to the platform and later I realized it was Pastor Dean Morgan he was running like somebody running for the Olympics he was running on the platform he came running and he laid his huge hand on my stomach and this is what he said I still remember God everything that I have received as a pastor my brother you know why i didn't want to be a pastor because i thought i was inadequate i thought i didn't have the organizing skills i remember pastor johnson morgan is my friend sandosh as we call him my 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 closest buddy he is an ex- extraordinary good in organizer but i was poor i didn't even know how to run a church but today the anointing makes the difference i'm i'm heading an organization with over 1000 churches and i'm also a mentor for some of the mega churches across the globe god he's a faithful god come on hallelujah what am i trying to say get a vision from god your life will never be the same again how many of you all the lord is prophesying over somebody in the situation that you're going through it is a setup for a vision from god Set it. 
and good preaching, hopefully. <laughs> Amen. But this session will come to an end. Amen. You cannot thrive on emotions alone. You need a specific vision. You know, Peter had this glorious ministry and is coming out. You know what? His fellow pastors, elders, Jewish believers came to him to counter and confront this act of Peter going to a Gentile's house. He said, how dare you go and eat with the Gentiles? Don't you know who you are? Don't you know where we come from? Don't you know the laws of God in the Old Testament narrated by Moses himself? Don't you know that? Why in the world did you do this? What happened to you, Peter? Where did you go wrong? You know, Peter, without even a blinking of his eyes, looked at them and said, I know what you're saying, but three days back, I was in my room and I saw a vision. Amen. When your vision gets attacked, it's a vision that's going to keep you going. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? It's... Get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. It's a vision that's going to keep you going. You can tell the devil, I know what God has spoken to me. And you know that you're not a man. And you can tell Shut up. 
sudden sense of popularity and how we associate for sake of public impressions. This is not for you, but this is only for people who can say, who cares for public impression? I want to glorify Jesus. I want to lift up the name of Jesus. in the wilderness. 
if God had given him a full blown picture, it is easier for him to be obedient. But let me tell you, obedience is when you don't even have the full information. But when God says, you say, God, I don't even know how, I don't even know when, I don't even know what, but I say yes to your word. Come on, somebody. Or can I get somebody who knows what I'm trying to say? God, give me the grace to be obedient. And we shall see the I want to be obedient. Get ready, get ready. Something beautiful is about to break forth in this place. Something excellent is about to be unleashed in the name of Jesus. You know, God, they say in journalistic, if you have, if you need to have journalistic objectivity and integrity, you need to ask certain questions. Why, when, what, and whom? That's what journalism teaches you. But none of those questions are raised in when God speaks to you. He didn't tell him what to do there. He didn't tell him whom to meet there. He didn't tell him what's going to happen there. He didn't tell him when it's going to happen there. He just said, go to wilderness. Are you ready to say yes to the Holy Spirit? Come on, hallelujah. This young man came to me in the afternoon and said, Pastor, I've been asking God, I've been fasting last week, I fasted for a week to hear the voice of the Lord. But let me tell you, I might say, I'm trying to make you a representation of so many people that might be going through the same situation as you are. But today, I want to make a statement. God might ask you to do something which will not make any sense. Don't you ever think, I never went to Canada because it was financially expedient. My salary was $100 a month when I started. Now we have four salaried pastors. It's not because of finance. I had an enormously you know, successful ministry in India and in the other nations. 20, 25,000. And I was led to a place where I would be preaching to 10 people and not one of them. I believe baptized in the spirit. I was called a revival speaker in India and the only person who got revived when I preached was myself in Canada. Come on, it was hard. Not even one hallelujah. I say it's easy to get children but to get an Isaac. In my church hallelujah is not very common. It's an Isaac. It's a hallelujah that came as a result of prayer. Come on, hallelujah. Now you have to come to a church. They will put everybody, even Africans, to shame because they'll take their flags. They will move when the preaching is going on. I have got an exciting crowd in our church. Come on, hallelujah. What am I trying to say? It is not easy, but I heard a voice. I was married for only a few months and I heard a voice. You know, go to Canada. God even told me the place Alberta to prophets. I remember the day before I could leave, my wife was absolutely in tears. We were not even completed one year of our marriage. Now I'm going to leave her to a place that I, it's so far. You know, I knew the ends of here. If I go a few meters from here, I could have an encounter with Santa Claus. <laughs> That's how close we are to North Pole. Come on, hallelujah. But let me tell you something, it was so hard. And I remember that night my wife cried. And that night I, I, I comforted her and I said, you know what, you're not going to cry and send me to Canada. It was a time of the Cargill War. Some of you remember Cargill War. I said, when the commander in chief calls his army men to come back and join duty, nobody has a right to refuse, even if he's married only for two days. When the commander calls, you say, yes, sir. I said, my commander is calling me. And I salute him, yes, sir. Let me tell you something. Do you want to be blessed? Get ready to be obedient. You know what God told me? I'll give you a big church there and become a headquarters for many churches. I didn't even have one church, forget headquarters. <laughs> Today, by God's grace, Canada Church is the headquarters of the entire Tammy ministry. God keeps his word. Hallelujah. But here is what I want you to know. Are you ready to obey him even though it might look absolutely insane? I'm not going to go further because there's no point of preaching further until I get an approval. Can I get some good approval? Pastor God bless you. I want some young people to receive this and make your, your decision on this matter known to the public. Do you want to hear the voice of God? And if so, if God tells you something which might not be something that is congruent to your own convenience, are you willing to say, yes, sir? Yes, God. Can I get a shout in this place? Can I? No, 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 no. Can I get a shout of agreement in the house of a... You know what, when 
once you do that, now here is where providence kicks in. You know, he goes to the wilderness and he sees a man going on a chariot. Now they are not buddies, by the way. They are strangers, for all they know. Absolute strangers from different culture, different background, even positionally different. How many of you know? You know, the Lord told me, this is something I want to say, speak about my own self. But if you want to join in this club, you're welcome. Recently, God gave me a few prophetic words which has not been fulfilled as yet. And I find it very difficult even to conceive it in my, in my mind, in my heart. You know what God told me? In the days to come, I'm going to make you meet with presidents and prime ministers. You know, I've not had that opportunity. I've had the opportunity of meeting mayors and governors, but not presidents and prime Then the word was that some of the senates in Africa will start with your prayer. You know, because God says, I don't want to discount it, but to me it looks very difficult. But this is a message that changed my thinking. You know, when a man is willing to obey God, he didn't even know that he will be coming in contact with the finance minister. Come on, hallelujah. When you are led by the Holy Ghost, you won't even know God will connect you.
that's a, you know, I was looking at some of your YouTube promotional videos and I thought, my goodness, I didn't get any other preaching stuff of my ministry, of my ministry, because I'm jumping. <laughs> but honestly, that's who I am. You know, I could be that tired sitting in a chair, put me on the platform. This is how I preach. So I'm going to make some actions here. Are you ready? Now, even if you don't join me, I'm okay. Okay, here we go. You know, how many of you know Peter has never seen, never seen the house of Cornelius? They have no clue. You know what? In those days, they didn't have the banner and board posters and, and billboards of Peter, the apostle coming to town. Get ready, get ready. No, nothing. This man has not even heard, at least some of you, when I came to London, some of you, have, like people have told me, they met me 20 years back, some of you told me they've heard my message on YouTube. There's some sense of, you know who I am. I'm not like from the land of uncivilized <laughs> medieval times. I'm somebody that you can identify with. Come on, I don't look like a, like a stranger to you. You make me preach in Malayalam, you will think I'm your family member. I'm there. But Peter does not have that kind of a comfort. In the house of Cornelius, they don't even know him. They have never heard even one sermon of him, and nobody has even introduced him. At least I have some people to introduce me. But you know what? When a man is led by the Holy Ghost, the Lord will go ahead of him and clear the way. Ah, you didn't hear me preach that. You know, when Peter reaches the house, he didn't even have to say, "Get ready, brothers." They said we are already ready. We are already ready. Come on, hallelujah. Do you want a ministry of the Holy Ghost? Do you want a ministry of the Holy Spirit? If that's the case, shout it, hallelujah. Everything will be ready. You know, it's not just convenience being ready. He said, I've got my uncles and aunties and sisters and sister-in-laws and that fighting uncle of mine from my, from my wife's side. All of them are we are ready. Come on, Pete. You know, if I were to go to a place, I'd say, get ready. We need to get ready. Get yourself ready. Then says, Peter didn't even open their mouth, his mouth. They said, we are ready, Pastor. What do you have to say to me? We are so ready. We are ready from three days back. Come on. We are ready. The Lord says, when you are led by the Holy Ghost, I came to give you a prophetic word. Some of you get this as a promise from God. Latch on to it in the days to come. God says, my spirit will go ahead of you and prepare the ground. Can you? 
have the freedom to do that. Are you ready to when you're led by the Holy Ghost? The Lord will go before you and the path is clear. The path is clear. Every hindrance that was standing against your life is removed in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, We have less money. 
My heart broke. I didn't pray much, but my heart broke. I asked God one question. If you are led by the Holy Spirit, somebody you really want to pray month, you know, a full month prayer. Just tell him. December 30th, after service, we didn't have much income in those two weeks as well. The 30th last but one day. A man comes to me and says, can we go for a dinner? Normally I would ask my, I've got my program coordinators who will arrange this, they look into my programs. But that night I felt like saying, I'm coming with you. I don't have any other appointment, we're going out for dinner. So I went, I said, we had a good dinner. After that, I, I was in the car, he took a check and wrote a check for $100,000. Oh and by the way, I'm going for dinner tomorrow night as well. Come on, man, I'm a boy. So $100,000. And then it's not that thing, you know, when we got the $100,000, our income from the last year went down. Just like that. He, he didn't, it, it was not even a fanfare. He just gave it to me. Didn't even, I didn't even know until I got it in my hand. He didn't expect anything from me. Even in terms of, I was a little taken aback. The number, good number. And then he told me something. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you something. I had kept a fleece before God. I said, if I'm going to ask Pastor Addison to go for a dinner tonight. If he says, yes. This money will go for his church. If he says no, this money will go to another church. I thank the Holy Spirit. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. You need to be led by the Spirit of God. You don't have to worry, brother. It will come. It will come. You know, we were planning for a project in Kerala, you know, with this money to build some houses for the poor. You know what? One week later, I get another call, another email. Somebody is offering me a one crore worth property in Canada to build those houses. It keeps on coming. It keeps on coming. Let me tell you, this time I'm talking about 100,000. Maybe another time when I come, I'll give you some stories of one million dollars. Come on. God is moving. What I'm trying to say, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, let me ask you today, how many of you want to be led by the Holy Spirit? I want to make one statement at this point of time. You know, I know the constriction of space here. We don't have time or space even for people to come forward. But you can do it wherever you are. I'm going to have a general prayer. But before that, I want to give you two important truths. Prophetic, that God spoke to me in the recent times. Very powerful. Are you ready for this? The next five to ten minutes are the most sacred moment of this seminar, of this conference, I believe. So listen to this, it's very, very profound. How many of you know, when you are obeying God, especially when you are in a comfortable place and God has asked you to be displaced or move from that place, it is not easy. I believe Philip, Philip ministering in that place for so many days is tired and probably has to walk maybe, maybe 10, 15, 20 kilometers. He's walking. He can't even walk, but he says, God, I'm tired. I'm tired, but I, I will still be obedient. I don't see anybody here, but till you move. Till I see the man that you have sent. Till you fulfill your plan in my life. Even if it is hard, I'm going to walk in obedience. Walking in obedience is not easy. But today, how many of you want to say, God, even if it is tough, I want to obey the Holy Spirit. He's walking. He's tired, but still, he's refusing to give up. He's, he's wholeheartedly obeying the Holy Spirit. Doesn't even know what to expect. But that's none of his business. He just wants to be obedient to the Lord. But Lord told me something. He walked to his onward journey, in his onward journey, with great pain. And it was an Herculean task, if you may, as he walked to that place. But once he finished that, the return journey, 
no walking. God is about to increase 
Jesus speak. It's not natural anymore. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural.
told you, this month I'm completing my 25 years in the ministry. But after being in the ministry, I've preached thousands of thousands of platforms, even today, even today. Let's say it's a five people audience. I will still wait before God. You know, Saturday night to Sunday, our service in the evening on Sunday, a house becomes kind of standstill because I'm waiting for Lord. It's not that I can't get some message from somewhere, put it together and, and present it with some kind of uh, humor and all that. I could do that. But I want to get that conviction that that's the word I'm supposed to preach. I make it very clear. Let it be a crusade even to the evening. I waited. Yesterday night, I got up early in the morning just to wait. Not because I don't know how to preach to an audience like this. But I want to get that surety. I want to get that confirmation from the Holy Spirit. You know, so what's happening now? Some of the places, I, sometimes I, come, I, I, I travel three or four nations in a week. Sometimes I get one session a week in a, in a, in a, in a country and the next, next session in another country. But with that one session, revival breaks forth. The Holy Spirit takes over. I hear reports of cancer being... What am I trying to say? When you are obedient to the Holy Spirit, even in the last minute, the Holy Spirit will start to move. Mighty upon the people. Can I get a shout of enemy in the house of God? Do the one that touch from the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to pray right now. I believe Brother Moby was there in that meeting in Coringer. It's a, it's a local church meeting of Tammy that we had in Coringer last month. December, I'm sorry, December. And it's on YouTube. I didn't see this, but so many of my friends saw this and said it's very hilarious. Because as I'm preaching, a man comes and grabs bike from my hand. He's on court tape. He said, I have to tell this testimony. He said, last year, Pastor Anis was preaching in court tape stadium. And those of you who have attended my crusade after crusade, it's very difficult for me to get out. You know, sometimes there'll be 25 people, 50 people trying to just touch and grab. Sometimes I lose some of my skin. Because even after I go, my hand is still there. It's hard to get out of it. So what they do, they have got cars lined up, they have got people standing in chain, and then they grab me from the platform, put me into the car and then drive off. Because there are a lot of almost close accidents. Because you know when you're moving, some people are lying down in front of the car. It's very difficult to, to get out of the place. So this man said, when I came with my wife, we come for prayer. You know, Pastor Andy said, only gone look into a car. I ran with my wife. And I think he said he touched the car or touched as I was in the car. Just that much. He said, my wife had, this testimony is on YouTube. My wife had nine tumors in her uterus. Nine tumors in her uterus. And that, those tumors just disappeared. Amen. Let me tell you, the anointing is going to come upon people even in the last row there. My brothers and sisters, my wife just gave birth to a child and she is now delivered a baby and I'm here to tell that story. He goes and comes back and plans a, che a kiss on my cheek. And that's the reason it's so hilarious. You can see this man coming back to give me a umma, which is very strange in Kerala. Amen. But that's how much he loved being there. What am I trying to say? When you are led by the Holy Spirit, even after you go, Miracles will happen. Hallelujah. Do you want such an anointing on your life right now? You don't want to hold. Come on, if you are hungry, if you are hungry, will you stand up wherever you are? Lift up your voice and cry out to God. I want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Come on, I want to hear the voice of the Lord. Bound up, bound up, bound up. Shut the door, you're determined. Pass on this and shut the door.
God wants to give you a message. This is the night of the release. Thank you. 
Let's pray. 